Hey guys, um, I didn't get to talk much because we were kind of running late, but today is going to be a day in my life, a vlog. You guys seem to really like when I vlog my life, so here's another one. Um, oh, you can't see me. Okay, good. So today I am actually going to be part of, where, how do I explain it? I'm going to a show um, as I've been working with the Create Not Hate um, campaign program and yeah so our idea has been chosen and we had a invite only event where only the people where their ideas that we pitched got chosen hey guys i kind of realized that you guys are probably going to be really surprised by what i'm saying because i've never really mentioned this campaign to you before but um yeah if you want me to go in depth on it more in another video then comment down below but create not hate is just a campaign directed by trevor robinson obe to help the industry create more diversity in the media industry i'll leave a link to more information about this agency shas campaign but trevor started this back in 2007 and has kind of reignited it this year due to everything that has like unfolded um george floyd blm everything like that kind of even motivated them more to want diversity within the media industry and we are working alongside them um to discover young creative talent basically and we were fortunate enough to be chosen and put forward and our ideas are going to be vocalized and expanded through them basically come so it's going to be really cool um i'll try filming there although they are playing music so copyright but um yeah so i thought i'd just tell you guys that i didn't even get to show you guys my outfit like come on Hey guys, this is editing Janelle. Um, I realized I didn't really explain much about those t shirts that I just showed you, but the t shirts are basically um, another group how they decide to represent and spread awareness. So, as you can see, one of the t-shirts said they see thugs or something like that. And on the, on the back of the t-shirt, it says, we see businessmen. So, just to show, like, prejudice, how people think, judged on what you look like. Um, and, yeah, they came up with that and they were able to put it in through a t-shirt that we can you can actually wear. If you want to um, have one of these t-shirts, then comment down below or dm me on my instagram and i'll be able to see what i can do for you guys yeah so i thought i'd just quickly explain what those t-shirts were about <laughs> my guy's djing he's making some sick beats <laughs> uh, those Yo. Uh, welcome to this auspicious event that we have here today which is okay. in lieu of the fact now um, it's, it's, it's very important that we do things like this because we are seeing now more than ever the power of our creatives in this time to um, make our voices be heard and actually make change and make difference you know when it comes to everything that's been happening within the Black Lives Matter movement at the moment it's very interesting to see because I've never been a person personally that's ever believed in protesting. Sometimes I just think, you know, you're just standing outside a building, nobody knows you're there really and truly. But in this digital age that we are in, what we saw happen this year is what has been considered and described as one of the biggest uh, movements ever to have ever civil rights movements to have ever happened. And that Ooh. is big in part 
to the digital space and to creatives and to social media because everything has been broadcasted everywhere. So if there was a protest and there was a march in London, people all across the world were able to see that and we were able to see that on the world screen. And we've seen so many creatives come out and speak out in all of their different ways and we want to continue to speak and, and understand that our voices have power. And that's why saying um, create but um, not hate is important in this time because we are actually seeing the power that creatives have, not just to, because it, it's, it's interesting that in this time, I feel like people are kind of getting just done with the cookie cutter creating. I won't bore you too much because it's all about the work. It's all about the young geniuses that we have in this in this room. I did start create, create not hate off 13 years ago, but just because of this year as well, we thought we had to, you know, really use this opportunity to, to um, especially in my industry, which I think is getting pretty stale, pretty old, because they don't have the talent in the industry. So I really wanted to, to try and set up something where I can really showcase. And I think this, the work, as you will see, it's amazing. Just, I think just after two months or something that, that we turned this around. And I've just been stagnant and, I, and, and I've really enjoyed it. And what I was surprised is how much I really enjoyed working with all, all these guys as well to try and bring this stuff around. And um, yeah, um, I just want to just say a couple of thanks as well to some of the people that won't get a mention. Some of the mentors like Paul Jordan, Matt from Red Brick Road, um, Dave Dye, Joe, um, um, Wallace, from, um, all these guys have, have really um, contributed to help mentor the kids and stuff. And I've been really grateful for that. And I've just been really um, excited about um, unveiling the work here. So I won't chat anymore. I hope you enjoy it all. <laughs> Thank you. Can I get one of those as I, as I just... Yeah. <laughs> So much as I said, that was the founder um, of Create Not Hate and uh, Quiet Storm and uh, Trevor Robinson OBE. What does the OBE actually stand for, sir? Second, sorry? Order of the British. Order of the British. What? <laughs> Did you meet the Queen or not? Yeah. Charles. Sorry, yeah? Oh, you met Charles? Oh, yeah, Charles, my dude, my dude, my dude. Boy, met Lizzie, bro, before Lizzie in the Lizzie, bro. All right, okay. <laughs> Okay, so our next speaker, right, who is one of the two creatives who came up with this event. Okay, so we are all here due to this person and one other. But the first um, speaker that we're going to have um, creatively, I'm um, not saying that um, OBE weren't creative, obviously, it was just like an intro thing. Right, so um, the first uh, poem that we're going to have, we're going to have a poem, and that is from Marley. So welcome, Marley, to the stage. Woo! excited to have you all here. I'm super excited that all you guys got to do something and be creative and see it come to life. Um, so today I'm going to do a poem just to tell you a bit about carnival. So how many of you know about carnival? Oh, I wasn't expecting hands but <laughs> <laughs> so for those of you who do not know every year around this time just out there on Portobello Road Skin is out and traffic is slowed for a parade of feathers, thighs, and black skin who would shake and dance as if England was not the country they were in. As if here wasn't where, you don't look like that's your car. And here wasn't where, you know, you're probably better off not being too dark. As if here wasn't the land of stop and searches, second glances, and squandered predicted grades. As if here wasn't where big lips and arse are beautiful, unless they are on you. And you're made to wonder, is he really into black girls? Or am I just something new to do? As if here wasn't the land of, it's all right if you don't get the right medical care, because your kind can take the pain. Where school books tell you that Egyptians were white and that being black began with being a slave. 
As if here, just out there on Portobello Road, black people weren't bombed and bottled just 62 years ago. That is why Miss Claudia Jones put together this parade of music and color and light. Yes, it is a party. Yes, it is a damn good time. But it is also our refusal to hide. Trust me when I say the carnival is black pride. So in 2020, with racial unrest on the rise, as white wool is being pulled from many a person's eyes, the kids that you're all about to see have done something pretty damn great. Just like Claudia Jones in the face of hate, they have decided to create. Thank you. <laughs> But I will be enough cushion to, <laughs> to, 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 you know what I'm saying, just to support the fall. And it always was, I'm not gonna lie, it always was, it always was. But yeah, no, Carnival is a beautiful experience and it's very, very, it's very, very important for our traditions and our culture to be immortalized in such ways and, descri and described as that because a lot of people will look at Carnival and look at us like we're animals or savages, but they won't look at football hooligans when they're doing their thing the same way. So it's all about perception and how we choose to make sure that our narratives go correctly. Don't think I don't know big words like Manari <laughs> <laughs> All right, now, at this point, I'm told that we're supposed to be having an interval. Is that still happening? No, I'm about to say, because if we do that now, it says 15 minutes, but obviously, we do that 30 minutes thing. So, <laughs> all right, so we're gonna, we're gonna press on. All right, so are we ready for our next speaker? Yes. All right, cool, cool, cool. All right, who was that? That year was solid, uh, Puma, brother. All right, cool. So we're gonna have a group at this point. Um, so we're gonna have O'Shea, Janelle, Princess, Jaden. Oh, Tiptoe. Don't wanna know how black this black might be. See black coming. Crossroads, buried under London. A shade of skin, complexion sings. It don't mean a thing, just an inconvenience to be black. Thank you guys, that was my first poem. about police brutality. Stop. Don't run. Succumb to the power of state patrolling the slum walls, seeking out those destined for a slippery slope, mischief trip fall into the tight grip of incarceration. Dragged along bars to harden, then infected with the incriminating poison. Decayed bouquets and candle wax seize into Kingsland concrete. Chocolate loiterers congregate outside corner shops like vultures finding refuge on the sides of pavements in intimidating pedestrians with words unspoken. I used to know a girl displaced in a tower block maze. Brown with curls, she wore gold in her teeth, skin thick and seasoned like meat smoking cigarettes in stairwells. Littering the estate with the butts of her broken dreams in the hood, she would chill with the man then posted up on the block. In the manner the siren would sound a warning shot. Blue lights flicker in sight, scatter when they come. Run, fled, I see, fed. I see one male taken to reprimand a brother. Then another, I see them ambush a father, a son, a human being. But he was vexed and must have resisted arrest. Face slammed into the floor, plastered to the ground. Don't move or make a sound. He wouldn't want to be sent downtown in a body bag. Don't breathe, it might be his last breath. Respect the authority or he could be tackled with run violence and no accountability Finding a knee pressed up against the chest pressure tugging tight at the neck. It's protocol This is how they serve to protect and keep us in check Mothers of the minority bleed tsunami tears from the bury of their womb lying lifeless above scarlet pools The brown girl's eyes rage red She cried another black body dead He died after being racially profiled injustice was never London met Death his penalty Another black body made victim of police brutality. Excessive and unnecessary forces used 139 times a day in London, stopped and searched four times more likely to be a suspect of carrying a sharp object, a genetic target capsized by life then tossed in the pen because society never accounted for them. You see, the brown girl would never think to commit a crime but still feared during the time as the stigma resides on the surface of her skin. Even when innocent, she could be taken in, sat at the back of a cop car because nothing ain't changed, star. 
The prejudice is still alive and it thrives in the prison system. Penalizing a generation suffocating at the wrist by silver bracelets that only shine behind their backs. The brown girl spends the day with her five-year-old niece. Siren sounds, it's the police. Her niece sinks into her arms and repeats, I'm scared of the police, I'm scared of the police. She then knew the fear ran deep. Does a five-year-old white child have the same fear growing up on London streets? Thank you so much, guys. And <laughs> I thought this is rap and this is jet. And um, are you gonna show a little thing about a campaign on screen? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so this is our, our campaign, uh, mainly in uh, British society, since I'm a man from England. We um, we experience a lot of microaggressions and a lot of s stereotypes in our in our like London community, like things like people crossing the road when they see us walking across, um, touching our hair as if it's like not normal. And really like, you know, judging us before even meeting us. Even talking about the thing about police, um, saying things like, we can just be walking in our clothes and we can get stopped for no reason, not even knowing our background or where we come from, just because of the color of our skin and what we dress like. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Janelle, and just to elaborate on what the rest said, um, yeah, it's more about we see in the USA or America that race, racism is a lot more in your face. Like, you can clearly see that, okay, there's some sort of injustice, but it's hard to really attack it and um, identify it in the UK because it's kind of so built within all our institutions, like the prisons, like the schools, and sometimes we don't even realize that what people say to us is something that they shouldn't be saying until we get, um, thank you, <laughs> until we get older and we're like, you know, maybe they shouldn't have said that, or maybe that was a bit racist. Um, so we're just trying to use this campaign to um, explore and kind of show people more um, in whatever form we can, just to show them that it is very prevalent in the UK, just maybe not as in your face as you would see it, for example, George Floyd, rest his soul. Um, but yeah, we just want to show you that things, there's still work to be done. So, thank you. <laughs> I don't know if anybody really, it's, it's still kind of like a story for me, I don't really believe it. Essentially, I'm with this um, charity sort of thing called Debate Mate, and I've been with them since year eight. That's me and Holly and Aaron's my two friends, and sort of we've been debating since year eight. And you know, in year eight, I was kind of like a little kid, but with a big personality, so I'd always be arguing with teachers, <laughs> and I didn't really have the proper etiquette or like, you know, the um, ability to, to argue but properly or get my point across properly. And that's something that year eight, um, that's something that the bait mate taught me. And so I've grown with them and become more like, like a, a stand up student, if you like. Like I became like deputy head boy and all that. But back in the day, I was getting like excluded to set up schools. <laughs> advertising company, I'm thinking, oh yeah, whatever. I'll be there, and I'm not doing anything like quarantine, let's just go. <laughs> One there, and then, um, I'm not really, I'm, well, I'm not really paying attention because it's like, like I'm kind of tired, <laughs> and it's like a long cab journey and everything. But then um, I'm listening to them talk, and I'm thinking, wow, the creative industry is kind of cool. And then they show me that high ride, but I don't know if you lot know it, but it's the one where it's like, oh, I like the one with the twirls and all that. <laughs> yeah. And so when I saw that advert, they made that advert, I said, wow. So then they started talking about Black Lives Matter, about how we're not gonna have carnival and how they want us to create something. And at that point I was like, create? What? Me, Holly and Elvis were looking at each other like, what do they want us to do? Like, 
Like, I, didn't, I, I, didn't, I didn't sign up for this. <laughs> so we're kind of looking at each other, then I run off to the toilet because I don't want to, I don't really want to be caught. <laughs> <laughs> I want, I want Holly to come up with it because she's like the academic and that. And then when I come back, Holly hasn't come up with anything. So I'm like, okay. And I think I'm thinking about it way too hard. I, I need to just sit back and think, well, this is actually my life. This is the life I'm living. What do I want to show? What do I want to portray to people that they will actually take something away? And so the thing for me is perceptions. I think that's a big part of racism and a big part of microaggressions. How you see people or how people get put in boxes, I think is something that I think that's kind of the root of racism. Because if you're put in that box, you're always going to be in that box. But if we take the boxes out of the equation completely, then it's not really a thing where it's only black people that have it. But obviously black people are in the box at the moment. So I thought, okay, how do I, how do I stop people from being put in boxes? And that's stereotypes. So I wanted to play with the idea of stereotypes, but I'm showing you, it wasn't that long of a process in my mind. I literally just thought, okay, this is actually how I thought about it. <laughs> <laughs> if you saw me on a normal day, I'd probably be rapping to something by a black person, but actually, in my bathroom at like 10 o'clock in the morning, I'd listen to Frank Sinatra at least once in seven, every seven days. And that's something you just wouldn't know when you look at me. But I think that's the problem. You don't know that until you know the whole story. You can't just look at me and assume something. You have to know the whole picture. So that's what I thought about. And then I thought, wait, are we, they're going to see the video in. <laughs> so um, I don't really want to tell you, I don't really want to tell you what the video, what you're going to see. But what I'm trying to say is that I stepped away from, from trying to think about it too hard and literally just thought about how to play with perceptions, and that's how I came up with this idea. And then the next week, I came up with another idea with Christian's help. Um, I'm really bad at the speaking thing, I'm so sorry. <laughs> no, you're good, you're good. <laughs> Woo! Yeah, yeah, just make sure you're ready for what he's saying, yeah? Hell, we need to move quick. Yeah, G, you know what I'm on? Make sure your hand is steady for the cut, yeah? All right. Don't want too much blood. Literally, fam. And make sure your knife work is safe, yeah? And keep your mask on. Everybody ready? Let's do this. Um, an incident that happened with me and my best friend. 
on our way home. And um, it was really scary because the police just came at us and they said that we were really suspicious. And it was just like, I was wearing the Durek at the time when it came with the perception that I had, the perception behind it that they were bad people. But if you know us, you know how we are really nice people. Mm -hmm. And it's just, it's sad that young black males in the UK have to suffer because of a perception. And that's what my t shirt here is about. Woo! about making the shirts was about negative perceptions about black people but uh, if you don't know them you can't say um, about them being bad people but I know some black people like um, people sitting down here and they're very nice people <laughs> <laughs> uh, that one's my favorite that one I love that one um, and exposure helped us design a t-shirt put it together as well um, but you can see the ideas are just so simple. The knife and um, with the, the surgeon on the back, and the, 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 the businessmen or the dealers. Uh, like, I, I'm pretty sure, I know I've been in a situation where you've been stopped and searched for absolutely no reason or because of perception. And it's just, uh, this is a really good way to shine a, shine a, um, an hourglass on a, um, on a light on this whole thing. Anyway, thank you guys. Woo! talking about this just over two months ago when we after the murder of George Floyd and we, we sat together and we said we've got to do something you know we need to reignite create not hate that was just over two months ago um, and then Marley and Chris approached us and talked about doing something at Carnival which felt like an absolute, absolute kind of critical thing to do um, bearing in mind we also run a business uh, <laughs> I was just, I've got, I've got to say, I was just like overwhelmed really today at what we've achieved in just over two months. And what I say by we is there's been a ton of people involved in making this happen. And we are going to show some credits um, at the end, which doesn't even cover probably everybody. I'm sure we've missed people. There's been individuals, organisations, people that have got day jobs, people who are already under hey, immense pressure just to get their everyday done, who've put so much work effort, resources into making this happen. And, you know, I, I'd be lying to, if I, you know, didn't think at times, what the fuck, what would you use my mind, I just went, um, why, the, the way, why, why have we done this? Um, like, how the hell are we gonna make this happen, you know? And I couldn't have even imagined uh, that, that we would have achieved what we've achieved. And one of the things, if I was really honest, that worried me the most was the quality. Are we gonna get really great work? We're putting a lot of pressure on people who've had no experience in advertising with actually very, very little time and actually very little input. I mean, this would be hard for our organization with professional creatives, with you know professionals who do this for a living day in, day out. It would have been hard for us to have achieved this in the time frame, let alone people who have never had any experience in the industry. And I've got to say, I've been absolutely blown away by the quality of the work. You know, this work stands up head to head with work that you see in our industries. A lot of it is better than most of the work that, that you see, in all honesty. It, you know, it stands up, and I'm incredibly delighted and proud and surprised by, by what we've ended up with. And I think what that says is there's this incredible talent out there, which is exactly what Create Not Hate is about, um, that is not being utilised in our industry. And we get a lot more fantastic work in our industry if there were more people like you in it. So I'm just delighted to be part of this. I'm incredibly proud and um, very, uh, I think I've told a few of you, but we have just found out that, that Channel 4 are going to be airing the films, which is amazing. No, what? 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 Also, you know, well, here are some of the other people that are going to be supporting the campaign. From a media campaign perspective, this will be out in the world. All of this work will be out in the world. It's a media plan that our clients would be envious of, um, which we've all got completely free and off the back of the quality of the work. So well done, everybody who's been involved. Um, it's fantastic, and thank you to all these people. Woo! Hey! <laughs> Okay guys, really bad quality because of the lighting, but we're about to be interviewed for ITV. 
we're going live at six so i'm gonna put it on my instagram and my snapchat what make sure you watch out for me um today or tomorrow today or tomorrow oh wait you can't say that because this is gonna be in the video i know you guys are gonna see it later anyway but yeah so really good opportunity Yeah. This is Trevor, the founder of Create Not Hate, and yeah. I am. I'm, I'm Trevor Robinson. I started off Create Not Hate to work with talented people like this young lady. <laughs> so it's been really rewarding for me. Very exciting, and I'm looking forward to seeing her more in the career. And when I walk, walk to advertising award dues, I can look out and see her face. Thank you. <laughs> Bye. Right. Okay, so. I spontaneously decided to film a lookbook because I thought this outfit is freaking fire. But <laughs> okay, so um, our event is finished. It was invite only. So sorry, whoever watches this video got a sneak peek into our event. But if you don't watch this video, then you weren't invited, boo. Sorry. But yeah, we just decided that we want to go to Westfield and yeah we're just gonna do maybe a little shopping eye shopping um i missed my parcel today which was so annoying i bought loads of things from topshop because topshop isn't having a huge sale um you guys will find out what i bought in terms of um you guys will know soon so yeah um this might become a few days in my life this might become just a day in my life but i'm not sure I'm just going to film whatever I can and I'll see you guys in the next clip. So we've decided to get tortilla, which um, they sell like tacos and burritos. So I guess this is like the American Chipotle. <laughs> but um, um, yeah. Hey guys um i'm in my auntie's house right now but yeah. i'm back and i'm just gonna be well basically we're just gonna have we have a barbecue so and not my mom in the background um we have a barbecue going to today yeah so um we have a barbecue um our what's it called our youth club local youth club organized a barbecue for everyone so yeah, I'll try to get some footage then, but my phone is dying, so, <laughs> um, yeah, I tried to film as much as possible, but if you're still here, comment barbecue, comment barbecue with that chicken leg emoji, <laughs> literally right now, I'll give you time, barbecue chicken leg emoji, okay, okay, good, <laughs> so, I will see you at my, well, our, our barbecue. So we went back and we started to watch the news because obviously we were excited that we were going to see ourselves there but turns out we weren't on there so um, I think it was the following day, the day that we just didn't like check, we ended up actually being on there but my auntie caught it on camera so the next clip will show you guys a snippet of what was on TV. <laughs> Of racism and discrimination, and want their creations to provoke change. 
the way in which people perceive it, again, is something I want to toy with, and I want it to be a bit more lighthearted, but still get the message across. If we can use this campaign to broadcast um, what we see and how we see things, I feel like we're able to attack the problem. The campaign Create Not Hate was for people who struggle themselves to get into the media industry and want to use their skills to nurse diverse talent into new opportunities. Yeah. I've saw myself a lot in this case being young, being black, and trying to get into creative industries or not even really knowing about it. So we are both selling to give back. You make sure your hand is steady for the cut, yeah? Everybody ready? Organisers hope this success will inspire industry giants to get involved in enacting change. Laura Allen, ITV News. Hi, so this is my brother's scooter. I'm going to try and um, do this, but I don't know how to do it. How do I do it, Bobby? This. <laughs> okay. Come on. Don't want you skidding out the tires. Brakes. Some of my packages came today actually, uh, but I won't show you guys what I got because I have a back to school haul coming up of everything I bought and yeah, so some of the stuff I bought um, is going to aid in my back to school lookbook as well, but I'm the, I talked about that earlier, the parcel that I missed had my clothes, but my shoes came today, so I'm going to try and get those like ASAP. But I'm going to try to get the lookbook out like soon, soon, like before school, which is very soon because school starts in like, I don't know, what's the date today? A week or less than a week now. So, yeah, but I'm going to get changed and then close out this video hey guys i thought i'd close the video out here it's been i think it's the next day it's the next day for you guys and um yeah we didn't see us on tv yet but i'm not giving up we are gonna be on tv soon <laughs> um but yeah so i have a family barbecue that i'm going to and i thought i'd close it out because i look way better than the last clip you saw so I'm just going to close out the video here. If you enjoyed this video, then please like, comment, subscribe, and I'll be back with more videos. <laughs>